Okie dokie. Welcome back to Duty's Daggers, dudes. We got a review today. The Quiet Carry 9. N I N E 9. This is an amazing knife. This is not mine. This was sent in uh, as a loaner for me to take a look at and review. So, before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, look down there and make sure you are. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can. Duties underscore daggers is uh, where I'm at over there. And uh, like the video right now before you forget. I'd appreciate it very much. So, this is um, a knife that came out semi-recently, in the you know, a couple months ago. Uh, well, yeah, it's been a couple months, I think. Um, and it's I, I kept hearing really good things about it. Um, just really good, really, really good things about it. And... Uh, I really wanted to try it before I bought it, and I knew that I would probably have a chance to get sent one uh, for review from the reviewer pass around group, and um, luckily I was, and, but it just took a little while. So I'm a little late to the game on the 9 here, but I'm really happy that I finally was able to check it out because I'm not sure I would have bought it without checking it out, and now that I have handled it, I am absolutely 100% going to buy one of these when they restock them. Um, they're all sold out at the moment uh, and have been for a little while. But apparently, word is that they're going to be restocking in July. Now, um, I heard that secondhand. Not sure how true that is. I hope it's true. So I'm going to be I'm going to be watching and waiting because I need one of these. So. Quiet Carry, um, or QC, I guess. Been around for a little while. Um, they have one knife um, that I really like and have been wanting forever. It's the Drift. Uh, now, the Drift is a completely rust-proof knife. It's um, LC200N, blade steel, you know, all titanium, stainless steel. Completely rust-proof knife. Looks really good. It's just, it's really my style. I've wanted one for so long and um, just never really got around to getting one. You know, um, a lot of times the one that I want is sold out. Um, eventually I will have one, but now that I've tried this, their other more recent uh, release, I don't know, man. If I had to pick between the two, it'd be really hard. But this, I, my focus kind of shifted over to this one here. Um, it's just beautiful, man. So let's measure it. Let's get the old ruler out. Not a big knife, not a small knife either. Easily full grip on it. I think this is over a three inch blade, yeah. Three and a quarter inch blade. Handle is just under four and a quarter. Four and three sixteenths maybe. Um, and then overall it looks like almost exactly seven and a half inches. Let me let Floki out of the room so he stops whining. There we go. You guys are used to that by now. If you're... If you've been watching my videos for a while. Um, so, those are the measurements. Let's do a few size comparisons and then let's get the calipers out and check what we're looking at um, behind the edge. This feels like a pretty thin measurement behind the edge. Not like insanely thin. I would... Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, size comparisons. Let's do some Spyderco Warncliffs. The PM2 Warncliff. Same size as the regular version, though. Delica Warncliff. Same size as the, uh, the uh, regular version as well. So kind of right in between those two. Let's do some Kaisers. The T1. A little bit of a similar knife there. Uh, how about the mini bag lighter? Okie dokie, and let's do two more. The uh, budget button lock kings right now. CJRB Echo and, or sorry, Pyrite and Echo. Right about the same size as the Echo, actually. Alright, so... 
Let's get the calipers out now. We'll do the blade stock thickness and measurement behind the edge. Just to kind of put it into perspective, um, a thin measurement behind the edge um, leads to a more slicey blade, but there's other factors like blade stock thickness, what kind of grind is on the knife. Um, but generally, generally for a, like a pocket EDC knife, we want to see 20 thousandths or less is nice. A lot of pocket knives are over that, like a Benchmade Griptilian, a Hinderer, something like that is over that. But I like to see knives in like, I don't know, 7 to 12 is really nice and thin. But, you know, I don't know. The 10 to 15 is pretty good. 20 is like, yeah, it's okay, but it could be thinner. Let's see where this falls. We have 20 thousandths. It's a little thicker toward the middle here. Well, yeah, it's actually a little thick. 26 thousandths there. And at the tip, it's 27 thousandths. Well, yeah, that's thicker than I was expecting. That's a little on the thick side. Again, this is going to cut just fine. <laughs> it's not like a, it's not going to cut if it's over 20 thousandths. Obviously, that's not the case, but um, it just it might not be as slicey as it could be. But it's, I don't know, it, it depends what you're doing with the knife, you know, um, but just to demonstrate. It's not like it doesn't cut, it's just, it, you know, I like my, my blades to be nice and thin and slicey because I cut a lot of cardboard and other similar materials. So, could be a little thinner on the edge, behind the edge, not too bad though. Um, oh yeah, blade stock thickness uh, is point one one. There you go. For comparison, um, something real thin uh, at the blade stock is the uh, TRM Shadow point oh eight. So that you can see the difference there. Bit thicker. All right, let's talk about this guy. Let's do construction first. Um, so we have an inlay on the show side, and it's really interesting how they do it. It's only like, I don't know, two thirds of the way across the handle, which I've never seen and I really like. A little something different. And it gives you some plain titanium up here to do some nice micro milling on, which they have done. So it looks kind of cool. You can get different inlays, obviously. This is the blue... Uh, I, I, need to, I need to learn more about these fancy carbon fibers, but I don't know if it has a name like Arctic Weather or some shit like that, but it's like blue and white and black, and it looks really nice. Um, this seam right here, where it meets the titanium, I honestly cannot feel one single bit. It's like it's not even there. Same all around. And they had to, you know, there's a lot of curves and different things they had to get this to fit perfectly in there. It looks really nice. We have their signature four holes, which are on all their knives. We got four holes right there and four on the lock bar. They don't do anything. They're just kind of, it's like their maker's mark almost. Really nice lack of hardware on the show side. You can see we have a piece of hardware back there, but it's just a nut on this side. The actual uh, screw is on the other other side. Same with the pivot. Really nice, clean looking handle. Um, very nice milled milled titanium pocket clip. I gotta say, this is my favorite milled titanium pocket clip I have seen or used in a while. It's plain, but oh boy, does it work good. I love this single hole up there to access the screw. And I love how it's completely flush back here. Look at that. So I'm guessing it does kind of like a hook and it goes back behind the scale and is secured with the screw. Let's see if I can get you a better look at it. It's just really cool how they did that. Nothing to catch your pants in there, your, your, uh, your seat, your pocket seam. And I just love how this looks flush back here. So nice. I love how the backspacer is flush too. I'm ti I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of backspacers being like there but not flush. Let me try to find an example. Um, let's see. 
I, I guess this is kind of an example. You know, they have the backspacer, but the scales are sitting up. They're just sticking up a little bit past the backspacer. It's not flush. Um, what are some other examples? I don't have any good examples right here, but you guys know what I mean, right? Um, gosh, I'm really wanting to find an example now. Come on. Come on, Kevin. You can do it. You can do it, Kev. Uh, this is kind of flush, but it's just not exactly flush because they chamfered it um, in there, so there's a little gap that you can see. Uh, it's, not, it's not an actual gap, but it's like a little divot all around. I don't know. You guys know what I mean. It's just they didn't uh, chamfer any of the edges in here, so they sit really nice and tight uh, against one another, and then they just they probably held this up to the belt sander and just got it all nice and flush and smooth. This looks really nice. I really like that back there. Um, titanium frame lock, obviously we have two screws holding in the uh, steel lock bar insert, which eh, it's not always necessary, but I think it looks kind of cool. Um, lock bar relief cutout um, is on the inside, which is awesome. Love to see that. There's a little bit of a cutout on the show side as well, or on the lock side as well. I don't know why they did that um, when it's on the inside already, but whatever. It doesn't hurt anything. It's it's shallow enough. It's not going to catch on your pocket seam. So whatever. That's fine. Um, there is a fine micro milling on this lock side too. Really super nice. Um, the blade is a really nice uh, kind of polished stone wash. Super, really, super duper, really nice. Uh, really, really, really love this blade. Um, it's kind of a, I guess it's a drop point. Well, is it? I don't know. I guess it's a drop point. Yeah, it's a drop point. Um, it's a good kind of safe, neutral blade shape. Not a super high tip, not a super low tip, kind of right in the middle. It would be kind of a spear point if this kind of curved instead of coming straight down. It would look more like a spear point to me. Um, so I like it. I really like it. I think it fits well with the handle. It flows well with the handle. Um, sharpening choil and plunge grind is done very, very well. You can see that our plunge grind begins to slope up and get thick right here. Right there. And our edge termination is way, way over here. So we have all this space in here for sharpening. You don't have to worry about nicking the plunge grind with your stones as you're coming in here. It's just awesome. Really awesome right there. Um, and the slope up to the full thickness of the blade stock is really uh, 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 like tightly radiused. I really like how they did that. Really nice and tight in there. Yeah, looks really nice. Thumb studs are just your uh, pretty typical thumb studs. Um, we got milling on the inside for the weight relief, and that's pretty much the construction of this thing. Blade steel is uh, CPM 20 CV, and yeah, let's talk about the uh, action. Now, I want to point out um, this uh, pretty aggressive cutout here. Um, not really a, it's not a choil, it's just a, it's like a finger groove. I don't even know really what you call it, just a finger cutout, I guess. Um, I've heard some people say that they didn't like the knife because of that, because it felt they didn't like how it kind of forced them to hold the knife like this. Now you could go over that and kind of put your middle finger in there and then your pointer finger above it, but there's not really a super comfortable choke up spot. Um, and I guess that would be one of my only complaints or nitpicks, I guess, about the knife is Back here, where, you, where they want you to hold it, is really comfortable. But I kind of feel a little bit far away from the edge. Um, you know, I like to choke up on my knives, or if I can't choke up, I like to be as close to where the edge begins as possible, because you just have more leverage that way. Um, so it kind of puts you a little far back right here. Uh, but really, there's enough things that I love about this knife that that's not a thing that's going to prevent me from buying it, but just something I noticed, something that I kind of wish my hand was a little bit farther up this way. Um, aesthetically, I think it's kind of a cool choice. Um, you kind of have this like almost rectangular handle and then just a boink, like just a boink, 
little cut out there. I think it looks cool. They have a wide chamfer going around the whole thing and a nice wide chamfer on the lock bar too and a chamfer on the inside of uh, this scale too so you have really good access in there. I like how they did all those super good access. I mean looking down from the top really nice access. Very comfortable to push the lock bar over. Super, super comfortable. This whole knife has, it seems, it feels soft. There's something about it that um, everything just feels very soft. All the edges are just soft. <laughs> They're just soft, okay? Um, I can't think of a much better way to describe it. It's just soft and knocked down. It feels like this these scales spent like weeks in the in the tumbler or something like that. Um, really, really feels good all around. Um, so the action. Now this is, I mean, so you can watch my unboxing of the knife, but I, I pull it out. I'm, I'm like, oh, wow, this looks amazing. And then I go to thumb flick it. And that's when I really fell in love. And then I fell in love all over again when I saw this. <laughs> it's really good. Um, this is a thumb stud only deployment knife, and I love me a good thumb stud, thumb stud deployer if it's a good detent, and this is a perfect detent. I mean, this thing rockets out. It makes a great sound as it rockets out. And it's just perfect, man. I would not want to change the detent a single iota from where it's at right now on this knife. I hope that it's consistent. I hope that I, when I buy mine, it's it perfectly like this one. Um, it's just so perfect. Uh, reverse flick, fine. Yeah, zero complaints with the reverse flick, but it's more fun for me to just do the thumb flick. Gosh, is it good. It's just really freaking good. Um, zero blade play. Rock freaking solid. And look how freaking smooth it is, dude. Like, ridiculously smooth. We got bearings in there, obviously. This thing makes such good sound, too. I don't know, you know, acoustics are an important part of a knife. Um, really important, actually. I think more important than some people even realize. Um, take the the Vostid, um, was it uh, the Vostid Corgi, for example? I thought it was a really cool design. It was a, a a cool symmetrical knife design. I liked almost everything about it. But when you go to flick it. Um, you know, when the blade hits the open position and, and hits the stop pin and the lock bar, where's a button lock, but the plunge lock engages, it made just a really muted kind of soft, mushy sound. Almost like there was like felt in there, like cushioning the knife. And that just absolutely killed it for me, man. It was not enjoyable to flick it, to flick the, the knife open. It was not enjoyable. Um, I don't know if I'm, I know I'm not the only one uh, that that thinks this way. Um, I don't know if that's the majority of people think this way or the mi minority of people think that way, but regardless, that's how I feel. And um, acoustics are really important. Uh, so the fact that this knife has perfect and good and pleasing to the ear sounds uh, really carries it over the edge for me from just a very good design, great execution to, oh my God, I need to buy this. Um, it's just, even closing, that sound is really nice. I mean, gosh. <laughs> it sounds so good, dude. Um, unbelievably smooth, like I said. It's just, I, I, I can't say enough good things about the action here. They nailed the detent. They nailed the acoustics. 
they nail the you know solidity of the lockup while while also having a completely almost completely free dropping blade i mean you can even drop it like a quarter of the way up and it's still dropping shut i mean that's amazing that they can do that i know it's on bearings um but still, I mean, I, I got, I got a ton of uh, bearing knives that, that don't do this, not with solid lockup. So, uh, really excellent job on that. Uh, now, ergos, we talked a little bit about it already, but yeah, it kind of locks you in right here. But where you're at is unbelievably comfortable. Gosh, I don't feel the clip one single bit. Uh, these are contoured scales. You can, if you look down here, you can see they're rounded a bit. And uh, that contributes a lot to comfortability in your hand. Um, extremely comfortable. Now, I haven't done a cut test with this knife because it's a loner. Um, so keep that in mind. I have not, like, gripped this thing and, and done the, the wood test or cutting the straps or the rope or anything. But just squeezing it right here and the little bit of cutting that I've done, the light cutting I've done with it, um, I have not noticed any hot spots. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, gosh, I can't think of anything real negative to say about it. I really can't. Uh, the knife is about, uh, what is it? 300 or is it 330? I can't remember if it's, I can't remember if it's 300 or 330. I know the, the Quiet Carry Drift, the other one I, I, I wanted was 300. This one might be 330 but I'll link it down below. You can go look. I think that's a pretty fair price. Um, just for the level of quality here, um, you know, it's just, it feels so high quality. It really does. Um, I don't know, man. I, it just, it, every, the titanium looks really nice. It looks like, and I, I know it's not the titanium itself. More than likely, it's the finish that's on it. But you know how some titanium looks a little darker than others? This titanium has a very light kind of, um, I don't know, brightness to it. And, um, you know, obviously finishes play into that. It looks like it is probably lightly stonewashed. At least the clip looks like it is. It's kind of hard to tell with the micro milling, actually. It I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's stonewashed. I don't know, man. Just what, whatever they're doing, it looks so nice. It, it just, I don't know, man. I think I said it best earlier. It, it looks like this knife was left in the tumbler for like weeks and weeks at a time. Super nice. All right, I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop gushing about it. Uh, so I, I always try to tell you guys. What I think of the knife, um, if I'm going to buy it, you know, if, if it's a loner, I, I usually try to say, you know, tell you guys if I plan to buy it myself or not. Um, and for this one, absolutely. I will be buying this, um, provided I have the funds when they drop. Um, I will absolutely be buying one of these. This is something that uh, I need to have in the collection. So... Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching, dudes. Please like the video before you head out. I would appreciate it. And um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, that's about it. Let me know in the comments if you own one of these, if you own any Quiet Carry, and um, what's your favorite Quiet Carry? I know they have a new one coming out, a new version of the Drift, um, which also looks really good. It's got a, a hole deployment instead of the thumb studs, and uh, I think it's a... Like a mil G10 show side. I, I kind of like the the uh, the OG drift a little better. Um, anyways, uh, this knife comes in in many options. They had a blacked out one that I I could have bought used. Um, a buddy was uh, selling his, but uh, I mean the blacked out one looked really nice. But I think I need to have one of these uh, uh, stone washed and satin versions. I just love the look of the titanium. So nice. All right, that's it. Please like the video, dudes. I'll see you in the next one.
Adios.